Okay, well good morning everyone again. My name is Tom Dorn and I'm with ABC Computers. Thank you for joining us today for our presentation on how to simplify security management for Microsoft Dynamics NAV. Uh, joining us this morning is Per Morgerson. Uh, per is one of the leading experts in Microsoft NAV security and he's developed a solution to significantly simplify uh, management of the security process. And so I'm going to go ahead and make Pear the presenter. Uh, as we get started this morning, I will uh, try to watch for questions. If you have questions, certainly let me know, and we'll try to respond to them uh, as quickly as possible. And then we, we will also leave time at the end uh, to give you a chance to just interact a little bit more fluidly. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Pear. Pear? OK. Thank you, Tom. Um, yeah. Uh, I want to show you uh, several pieces. We have a solution called Easy Security, and it's kind of like JIT reports where they have many levels of that solution. That's actually what we have with Easy Security also in here. We have a light product, and a large portion of that one is actually completely free, actually. So you can use the light products, and you can uh, get it added to your license, and then you can use it um, without any cost, actually. That's a little piece that can be registered on that one uh, also. But then we also have a complete solution, both for um, the roles and lock-ins, and then we have something that is field level and data security that goes beyond what you normally can do in standard NAV. Uh, I'm going to show you most of this one in the roles that are trying today, but everything you're going to see works in the classic kind exactly as you're actually going to see it here in the Rosa 2013 version today. So uh, I want to first show you the light product in here. And one of the big issues about dealing with um, users is that a lot of times you need many, many permissions actually being added to a user here. So if I go in and look at a user like Susan, for example, in here, um, I can see that Susan has a long list of permissions in here, um, both because I have each role and also have each company in here. One thing I can do, I can actually go in here and add access controls in here. So if I wanted to go in and say, now, uh, Susan needed these five roles in here, then it comes up and asks me which company should it be. I could also hit cancel and select all of them. Well, let's say I just wanted to pick these two companies up here, actually, Kronos Europe and Kronos North America. And then it say, ask if I want to add eight of them, because two of them already existed, the basic one that I selected in here. And then it actually added all these uh, permissions to my user in here, with uh, a lot simpler uh, flow than I normally would have. So, that's an easy tool to copy or add access controls in there. If you also have two users that are the same in here, I have another user, John, down here. And John already has some permissions in here. If I wanted to have John and Susan have the same permission in here, I can actually copy access controls from one user. And I have um, selected Susan up here, and that's her number, I guess. Um, and I have an option to say if I want to add new or want to replace completely. And I just want to add the new one in here. So I can now go down and click OK. And the eight access controls I added to SUSE, I also added them to John basically by copying down here. 30 of them already existed in here. So that's an easy tool to just maintain the users in here. One thing we also have is in the light product is something called snapshots. And if I look at it right now, I can see, oops, I forgot to generate a snapshot here first before I did anything. So let me create a snapshot in here. It basically takes a, uh, all your security settings and keep it in a snapshot in here. And if I then go start modifying my security, I can always roll back to these snapshots at that time. So I now created my snapshot, and let's go back and look at my user up here. So I have John, and if I look at John's access controls, for example, let's go in and just delete something. 
Yes, that's one I want to get rid of. Um, and if I now go back and look at my snapshots, I can see um, that's not completely true in the event that um, there's a caching going on in here. So it actually keeps on telling me that I have 38 uh, records in my life. That's not really true. But I can actually restore all my access controls from my uh, restore point in here, all my snapshots. So that allows me to roll back a user, and I can have as many snapshots as I want. One thing you also have is like dealing with users is one thing. Dealing with roles or permission sets, that's why you really have a lot of time consuming uh, issues in here. And we can actually record permission with the light products. Um, we have uh, a limitation in there when we record, but you can go in and record with the completely free version in here. So to record permissions, I would need to use the SQL profiler. And it's part of the SQL Management Studio. So when you have SQL uh, database, you also have a SQL Management Studio in here. And I'm just going to go in and say I want to um, start tracking all my uh, processes that goes in here. And then I can go back to my local client here and go modify a customer, for example. And it's right now reading the up here for the first time in here. So it takes a few seconds for it uh, to get started. Then I can take a look at a single customer. And I'm just going to change an address down here. So all I would need is modify permissions on my customers in here. But as most people I have dealt with permissions know, you need a lot more than just uh, permissions for that one. So if I go in here and say I don't want to trace anymore, so I'll just go in here and save this one as a trace XML file. So this one was an edit customer trace. Let's just minimize the thing again. Then I want to go back to Easy Security, and I want to create a new permission set or role, as it's called in 2009 in here. And this one was a new edit customer. And I can now import my SQL profiler trace in here. I select the file, edit customer, and then I have an option to add related permissions in here. And I don't want to check that one right now, so uh, let me just go ahead here and import. It now reads my SQL profiler trace. And I get uh, 15 records inserted in here. So it had all the read and modify on my customer. I needed to read my customer at the entry and my sales header and things like that one. So there were some permissions required for that one in here. But the other option that was when I imported this trace, I had an option to actually go um, also add related permissions in here. So let's create another one in here. Did it customer related and again import the trace but now check this field down here first it tells me that the unregistered version is actually limited to a certain um, number of objects that it's importing and if you look at this last range it means it's all the customizations that you have done in the 50,000 range and it's all the uh, objects that are for localizing of in a VA tree. So uh, what else is importing the trace? And now I've got uh, 23 related permissions in here. So I had some permissions before, not a lot in here. But because in my customer table, I have table relations to other places, the system actually helps me to create this role a lot better in here. So I don't have to do all the drill downs necessarily to actually get this working well. So um, that's what I can do when I actually record in here. 
I can actually also use these functions manually in here. So if I create another role, then I would say, okay, I would just want to do any customer. Um, and this one is actually manual. I still couldn't start. Um, I will go in and say I want to have my customer table, 18, and I want read, insert, modify, delete permission to it. What we can do from here is actually add related permissions now. The same functionality that was done during the import is actually being applied in here. So there's a lot of things I don't have to remember to do manually. So this function really improves the easiness of just creating new roles in here. So if I wanted to also add another table, for example, I can go in and say, now I also want to add my sales header, for example. And again, because I had insert modify, I can actually go in here and add related permissions also. And now 17 new records actually got inserted in here. So it really helps with building manual roles in here also. Because if I have insert modify, I can get all these added relations uh, without actually doing a lot of trial and error in here. So everything you have seen so far has actually been completely free. The only thing you need to do is have your uh, license updated with uh, the Easy Security Live module. As you saw when I imported the roles, I got a message saying that it had a limitation. If you go ahead and register Easy Security Live, it's an online registration up here um, where you request a key. When you get a registration key, you can use it without limitation to actually record uh, table data permissions in here. And the registration key costs $250. So that's the light product in here. Um, if there is a light product, there also is a full version of it. So let me go take a look at the full version of Easy Security in here. The light product, uh, first of all, it's a lot cheaper, of course. But the other thing is intended for smaller user counts. When you have 10, 20 users, the light product is maybe interesting. If you have 100 users, the full product is for sure the one you want to have. That will save you so much more time. The other way around, you can also say a user, the company with only five users, maybe need the full product also because some of the features that it actually gives you. If I look at logins, for example, I can go in and say, okay, um, when I have the user John in here, uh, I can have the same permission as another user ID. So you can set up one user and then have five other people be like that one. Or you can go in and say, John is a new user and he needs the exact same permissions as Peter in here. So it takes very short time actually setting up a new user. If we go take a look at Peter then, instead of assigning individual roles, and as you saw with the life product, there's a lot of role company combinations you end up with, we can actually create groups of roles in here. So I have created a group in here, and uh, if I take a look at the one I have in the system, I have one down here called sales. It has basic, it has all the things that I need to actually be able to do my job in here. So a role group is more job description. Right? Um, so let me select the sales in here. The same thing before I select the two companies in here. We can actually do groups of companies the same way actually. So when I looked at my Cronus Europe and Cronus North America, we can set up one group that is called operations in here. So before when I looked at Susan, she had 30 role company combinations. Um, when I'm looking at this one, I'm really only looking at a single uh, record in here. So it's a lot easier to maintain and get an overview of when you have many users. The other thing is you can actually go in here and say, yeah, that's fine, uh, but the manager is on vacation for the next week, so I'm actually going to be the operation manager um, for the next week. And with the full product, 
we can actually put expiry dates in on permissions also. So this permission actually expires end of April or fourth of April and yeah, at this time. So, uh, so the user maintenance is a lot simpler and you also have expiry and users by the way up here because it actually allows you a lot of grouping. When you look at roles, um, the recording feature are basically the same except we actually uh, deliver a whole lot of extra data here where we have actually created a lot of roles but else you can basically use kind of the same feature like before. So if I actually go in here and say I want to have my edit customer, I can add my recording and the same recording I did for the live product actually works for the full product also in here. So if I decide to start with the live and then later on get the full product, I can actually reuse all my recordings in here. We do a lot more with this recording in the full product and we give you a lot more flexibility. First of all, I can select which parts of this recording to include and I have different databases, for example, so I don't want all that stuff in here. Um, and um, I also can actually filter by company and things like that from in here. But I just want to include this one in here. And I import it. I think 18 permissions before. I imported 100 in here now. And that's really because we both look at the table data, but we also look at the objects executed now. Here. And that gives us a new ability to control security by the objects in a simple way, because if we can deny objects as we do, you can actually just record if people need to be able to use them. So uh, but let's attach my recording and update my role in here. And last time, I think it added 23 related permissions. My 100 permissions actually went 59 more in here. The live products only do table relations because that's the only thing you can find in the database. With the full version, we also know about both complex relations, but also flow fields at that time. So, uh, yeah. So we have kind of similar features, uh, except they're more powerful in this one. The last piece that comes with the full version is the ability to use our demo data. We have taken the application and said, we're going to look at each little piece of it and create a role that can edit a customer, create another one that can create a customer, view a customer creating each different sales document type, releasing it, uh, posting the shipment, posting and so on. All this one we have done for sales, purchase, finance and inventory in here. It's around 80 new roles in the system where we have separated the whole application down to small pieces now. If we then go and look at that one, we can actually now go in and say, okay, now I want to decide what my customer service person can do. And I can go in and say, oh, they need to do all these tasks in here. And inside the full version of EC security, that's actually a row group. So you create one row group based on one column, and that's what you assign to the user after that one. So this simulator can give you a head start, uh, or more than a head start. It can make it much, much faster to get up and running with security. If you need to have segregation of duty or you're under the gun to get tasks being actually implemented, then the roles that we actually have recorded here are all based on um, or being checked. So with fast the system, we have verified that we don't have any segregation of duty issues. So um, all these roles are delivered as demo data, and let me just show them here in the classic client, um, where you can actually see my customer edit out here. It is based on two recordings in here, and as I update that role, I can see that I get 211 permissions in here. If you had your own source code underneath, these recordings or roles are based on recordings. And because it's recordings, they're going to be improved with your 
extra code in that. So if you have ESIP, you would see you have get table relations for the ECF agent service, the packing rule, and so on. Um, if you had customizations, all those ones would be considered also. So this one, again, allows you a much faster time to implement security if you need to do it very, very precisely. Yeah, so that's the two pieces, uh, the light product and the matching version of the full product in here. Um, the other thing you have with easy security is something that goes uh, beyond standard NAV security. Um, and that's uh, field level and data security out here. If I want to look at uh, how that actually looks before I change anything, I will go in and take a look at my sales order right here. As I look at my list of sales orders, everything looks completely normal. I see all the menu items, and if I look at a single sales order, I can see every field um, when it gets here in a second. I see every field. I can edit it. I can click on every button up here. Um, so. Basically, everything is completely normal in here. If I want to tighten this down so users can't by accident change a lot of things in here, that's what you can do with field level security in here. And it's independent of the normal security in NAV. So you can actually use the light product for that if you wanted to, but still use the full version uh, of field level security in here. If I wanted here, I can go in and say, let's go look at the list in here. And I'm going to set up for the blank user, everybody in the system except the one I specify later, for the source table, and then read only in here. If I now go back look at my sales order, I'll see that suddenly all my menu items grayed out up here. And if I look at a single sales order, everything is grayed out and uh, all the menu items are gone out here. I can't change anything any longer. I can still see the data and I'm actually still super user behind the scene. I'm just being uh, controlled by this field level security to have a lot less permissions in here. The same thing if I now want to say, okay, I want to give myself more permissions in here. I don't want to be limited that much. Instead of using my read-only setup, I will use a basic setup in here. And we only have two, but you can have as many as you want in here. So as I now go in and look at my sales order, my statistics button is now available up here, and I can click on that one. I can also see my sell to customer number is editable. Oops, that was my statistic that came up and my shift to code. But most of the fields are still read-only in here. So I'm completely uh, locked down on most of the things, but I can still actually go and create a new sales order. Uh, I just can't change a lot of fields in here as I do it in here. So if I wanted to, I could just go through and do that. Same thing can happen to lines and so on in here. But let's go back and take a look at uh, how that uh, basic code actually was in here and look at some of the features that you can do on top of this one. If I go in and look at the objects, um, zero is like the blank user. It's a default. I've set every page in the system to be viewed in here. Same thing goes for my quote. I have made that editable, and if I wanted to, I could actually go down and take my statistics and hide that one down here so people couldn't see it. If I look at my sales order, that's where I have specified more details. And um, I have my field zero, that's a default. I have made every field view out here. But let's just go ahead and hide every field then. And then only the fields that I'm allowed to see down here this is the one that will be left on the page now. If I look at my controls, 
and that's the button down here. I can go and hide those forms again. And uh, I actually will go in and say, okay, let's go and add my post and print button. But I'm actually going to gray that out and just make it view in here. So by hiding all buttons, I adding my post and print but grayed out, and then uh, hiding all fields in here. So if I now go back and look at my sales order, be very, very different because basically every field except the few one that was mentioned in here is gone. All my actions up here are almost gone. When I click on statistics, I get an error that I can't view that one. So that's really um, what you can do with the field level security. We also have an ability to filter data with this application. So if you only want to see certain customers, for example, in one posting group, that's one of the things we can also do. So, uh, but just to go through this one again, um, if we look at it, I'll show you the light product first. It has features to copy between users. It has a snapshot. It has a recorder. Um, and it has the ability to add related permissions in here. And that product is completely free, actually. When you then register the products, you can import again uh, for all tables in the system. So you can build whole new roles. With the free version, you can update the one that comes from Microsoft or ISVs, for example. Um, and uh, that product costs $250 when registered. As you get to the full version, we have the roles and logins where the main features or the main differences are you can record uh, other object types. We have a lot of demo data that is all for segregation of duties. Um, that product is uh, $2,500. And when you look at field level security, it adds $2,500 extra on top of if you want those features. Yeah, so, so that's basically the way that you can actually simplify security by using the easy security solution with different levels of it as you go up through the chain in here. Good. Well, thanks. I don't know if anyone has any. <clears throat> yeah. I, I was just going to, I was just going to say if people have questions, uh, if you want to type them into the chat. Uh, that's down at the bottom of your screen. You may need to expand it, but there should be a little chat icon, and I will, or questions, and I'll be happy to have Peer respond. So, Peer, um, with the, is there, is your solution granular? Or is it a, do you buy, is it one piece? How is it sold? Uh, it's actually sold as three individual pieces. You can oh, sold and sold. The light product, you can add that to the license for free. Um, and it's kind of just a benefit. The roles and lock-ins are one piece. You can buy that one. And then the field level and data security is one piece of that one. And if you actually go to our website, um, you'll be able to find our price list out here. Um, and if you look at it, we have the light product down here. With registration, it's $250. If we look at the roles and lock-ins, it's $2,500. If you want to add the field level security to it um, or to your database without anything, it's $2,500. If you get the complete solution, it's $4,500. And that's basically everything is in this solution. There's no additional cost except training and setup. And that was the, that was the next question. Uh, and how much training do you typically anticipate? We have uh, we have over 300 customers now running the full version of EC Security. With the live products, we have a lot of videos. Basically, on our website, if I go uh, back to our website. Um, you don't need any training really for the live product. There is a set of training videos, how to do the install, how to register, how to maintain logins, 
um, how to record permissions and so on. And each of these videos, five to ten minutes or so, will guide you through and show you how the application actually works. So there's really no need for training on the live work. And as we get to the roles and logins, um, we have uh, done over 100 trainings now, and we will train you as a customer inside your database. And when we're done, you have a fully working system in your test environment. And it's for a fixed price of $500. We actually do the same for field level security also, and that's $500 extra. And then we can offer you support if we do the training. Um, then you can actually also um, get uh, support directly from us also. Of course, that's only for security related and our application. General support, of course, will always go through your uh, through ABC computer, of course. Other yeah. questions? Uh, sorry, go ahead, Tom. <clears throat> nope. I was I was asking our attendees if we had other questions. I did have uh, uh, Brandon asked if we would send out a link to the presentation, and we'll certainly do that. It's typically ready uh, to for others to view uh, in an hour or so after we finish the our session this morning. Yeah. Also, for the full part, by the way, we have. Of course, for the live product and the full product, we have complete online help, and all versions, as I already mentioned, works from 2.6, that is 15 years old almost, to the most current version, as I just showed it in, uh, right now. But we have a lot of documentation in here also, and we have had several customers that just based on the customization, all the documentation we have out here, have been able to actually go through the implementation. The most important piece, if you do that, is to go read this best practices document because it basically is only a page and a half, but it explains the philosophy of our product in here. What is the idea about um, how you use it the best approach and so on? Okay, Pierre. Uh, last call for questions. Uh, if anyone has questions, now is a good time. Otherwise, uh, we will be posting the recording to the website. It will be available under our news and events section and uh, recorded webcast. So uh, certainly thanks everyone for attending. Pierre, thanks very much for the presentation. This was very informative, and I hope everyone found it to be a good use of your time. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you again at a at a future presentation. Thanks everyone and have a great day.